Yeah, I didn't make it. I cut it all off. Too much going on up there. It was tradition for gangs to name themselves after medieval warriors. So the use of knights helmets was very, very common back in the early days of gang banging in Chicago. Let's get into this video. In a city known for its fearsome super gangs, criminal enterprise like the mob, gangs, Chicago has its own culture from graffiti on the walls to how the south side and the north side are separated. In Chicago, it's where you're born that defines who you are, not your race. This is gang life. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. God out, should have seen the look on their faces. All jealous cause your boy. Hey, what's up? My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. Welcome to another episode of Gang Life, Chicago edition. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, thumbs up, thumbs down. Hey, if you're part of my crew, mi familia. You already know. Grab the keys, gas it up. Let's take a ride. So we've been going through the whole history of Chicago and its gang culture. We've been going through, you know, the gangs in Pilsen, the gangs on the north side, Humboldt Park and stuff like that. And we have much, much more to go through and go over. But we're going to take a step back. You know, before the sweaters. Because remember, all these gangs came from greaser gangs and from back in the day. So when you watch like Grease and you see them, you know, wearing those leather jackets and those pants. Don't make fun of that. That's how the whole gang culture started. Remember the T-Birds on that, on the, on the movie? Yeah. That's how all this started. The sweaters, the, the cards, the, the flyers everything the graffiti everything so this is what i mean it is culture it is history and it must be told so it was tradition back in the day for the gangs to name themselves after medieval warriors so the use of nine night you see i can't talk night knights helmets was very very common the knight's helmets was was common so common back then that they had to distinguish themselves with different kind of, uh, of what they call plum, the hair on the helmet. It was a way to distinguish what kind of, what helmet it was. Because back in the days, the Ambrose used it, the Counts used it, Taylor uh, Street Jousters used it, the Spartans. And later on, like, I want to say 70s, the Noble Knights started using them and the Latin Brothers. So see, these were all helmet knight emblems. But because the Ambrose and the Counts were so close and they were rivals, I'm, when I mean close, it's like corner to corner, like one alleyway to another. That's how close they, had, they were. They had to make their helmets stick out and pretty much make them different. So they used, uh, you know, the top, the, it's called a plum, but it's the hair on the helmet to make it stick out. So. The uh, Counts used a taller one that comes sticks out, and the Ambrose had a standard one, and that's that's how it, that's how it was, and it, it stuck out. But then later came all the other stuff. Then came the ways to making gangs sound more powerful and threatening. By the early 1960s, they were using they were using words to add on to their to to their name, the Supremes. The Almighty's, the Insane's. These were all words that were that were added onto their names. And later, by the 1980s, were being very, very commonly used by a lot of the street gangs. The insane Spanish Cobras. See how that adds on to it? The Almighty Latin Kings. The Maniac Land Disciples. The two six and the party people both took up on gangster on front of them. So it's gangster. Two six gangster party people. The four corner hustlers and some vice lords started using the word solid, so they would tag that in front of their names. So these are all things that 
you know, throughout history, I guess a lot of these youngsters, if they don't know their literature from whatever organization or group they belong to, they, they forgot where this came from. Just like the insane gangsters saying disciples, they added that in. And back in the day, these groups were formed to actually form groups of alliances and groups to fight off other enemy gangs that got really big because remember back in the day, the Land Kings got so big and spread out through all of Chicago that a lot of these groups got together to fight other gangs off and then ended up you know, going to war with each other. But there was a time where a lot of these groups were actually together. In Humble Park, they had the whole group where it was the insane, almighty, and, and uh, maniac family. You know, they, they were all pretty much under an umbrella. But with time comes war, with war comes power, with power comes greed, and with greed comes a lot of destruction, death, a lot of soldiers going to war, going to prison, losing territory, gaining territory. It is a big melting pot. And in Chicago, a lot of these neighborhoods have changed where some of the gangs have gotten really, really big or some of them have completely disappeared like the Noble Knights. The Noble Knights was another gang that used a helmet also, but they're no longer around. Remember, at one time, at one time, they were powerful leaders that were leading these young kids, groups, men, and there was peace. There was peace among other groups. There was peace, it was all about getting money um, and keeping the t the, your neighborhood safe. If you go way back into the 70s and 80s, like I said, a lot of these organizations had social workers that were assigned to them where they would go into these places and they had they had places where they would hang out, like little like arcade areas, whatever you want to call them. They had little clubhouses where they had their logo in front and people would go and hang out there. They would hang out, they would keep the kids out of trouble in the neighborhood. Remember, Chicago was a big melting pot for a lot of races. And a lot of races got treated really bad, you know, the Irish, the Italian. So all these gangs were formed to protect one another against racism. Just like, like the Latin Kings started as a movement against Latino, you know, racism and not letting people come into their neighborhood and destroy it. Because people would go out to other people's neighborhoods to destroy, steal, rob, kill. And this is why they formed in the first place. But then they evolved into what it is now. And like I said, it's not about glorifying the gang life. It's about remembering what it was, what it turned into, and where it's going now. A lot of these kids are getting life sentences at 17, 16 years old, and it's for nothing. It's for a street that's not even there no more when they come out. And there are a, lot, a lot of them are brainwashed because, let's be honest, at the end of the day, those leaders that are out there don't care about you. They don't care about you. If they did, they wouldn't be putting a gun in your hand. But that's just me. I don't know nothing. You don't listen to me. You know, my name's JC. I am wrong and strong. Hey, don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live. But if you live it right, one life is all you need. So stay out of prison. Stay off the streets. Stay off of drugs. Be wrong and strong, man. I dare you. Catch you guys in the rebound.